Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee Convos. Reset Coffee Convos is one of my favorite things to do because I get to talk to such interesting people. We have, um, we have some seats that are open for City Council in Folsom, and so once again, we are here interviewing candidates, and today I have with me Phil Miklos. Let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> welcome, Bill. How are you today? I'm very good, John. How are you? I'm doing well. Are you drinking any coffee right now? Yeah, it's over here, but it's not yours, sadly. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> here, let me write that down. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, why don't, you, why don't you start by giving us your elevator pitch? Tell us a little bit about who you are. and. Okay. You know. So uh, we came up to Folsom uh, about 17 years ago. My okay. wife actually works for the school district. And so uh, she got a, an offer and I had just sold my firm. So they didn't care where I, le- where I went. So just, we left from San Diego and here we are. Uh, so 17 years later, uh, we live in Empire Ranch area. I've had the privilege of being on the utility commission as chair. And now I'm currently serving as a member of the planning commission. So I've been involved in the city for a little bit. Uh, for those of you who have known the city for a while, I actually came here, believe it or not, when there were still horses on East Bidwell Street. Um, so that's how often and how long we've actually been here. For, and that's a little bit of trivia, I think, that people would find amusing. Yeah. So I've grown up, if you will, with Folsom. So I've been, for those of you who remember the parade on Sutter Street, when they used to have the cows go down, uh, the running of the bulls, I ran with the bulls. Uh, oh. Uh, that was also for me a highlight. It was a lot of fun. So Folsom's become endeared to both of us as a result. So it's, it, I'm not going to say it's a natural thing for me to kind of gravitate over towards considering city council, but this is part of the process, I think. Okay. So that's part of the reason. Okay, good. Yeah, well, we'll talk more about that. So you're running for District 3. Now, this is the first time that we've had everything you know, separated into districts. So uh, yeah. can you loosely uh, define what District 3 is? You know, I have actually have a perfect answer for that one because I thought about it. So for those who don't know what District 3 encompasses, it's huge geographically. Probably I'm going to venture the largest. So if you know Folsom, If you know where Empire Ranch is, that's one part of the district on one side. And then I go all the way over and I pick up everything south of 50. Okay. And so basically I go along a corridor that picks up all of Iron Point down to East Bidwell, a good chunk of Broadstone down to East Bidwell. Um, The dividing line between me and five is is golf links. So it's huge, geographically huge and very diverse. That is geographically huge. Now, I don't know a lot about city government, probably just enough to be dangerous. And I also know that my wife tells me I am not allowed to run uh, for any office. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, what do you know about city government and it, what do you think the role of a council person is? So the role of a council person is to help define the course of the city. So borrowing a cliche, we're the, we're the individuals that work together to create a vision from the 30,000 foot level. Okay. Occasionally we drop down to the 10,000 foot level. And if you watch Maverick, you know, we don't want to go below the deck and get ourselves in trouble. But sometimes we go all the way down below the, the 10,000 foot deck. But generally we're, we're the guys and gals who literally try and figure out how what the future of the city would look like. Now, obviously, we do that with tremendous help from staff at all levels. Sure. But at the end of the day, that's really the mission. <clears throat> so from a governance standpoint, the council um, does not talk to or actually control management of the city, except through the city manager. City manager reports to the council. We all work together with that individual. Um, that individual then you know, works together with the, her very or his various department heads. However, um, all members of the council do on occasions when necessary, will work with the various department heads to understand their budget, budget needs and constrictions and concerns. Again, creating a more well-rounded approach to that 30,000 foot level. Okay, so let's talk about the future of the city uh, for a little bit. Um, okay. 
in 2004, there was this thing called Measure W. I, I never hear anybody say Measure W anymore. We just uh, right. refer to things as, as you just did a few minutes ago, uh, uh, south of 50. Uh, right. You know, or that place out where Folsom Ranch is, or you know where or the Folsom, plan area. Uh, yeah, where Folsom. So it's thirty five hundred acres. I I think that's uh it's uh, fifty out to White Rock. Um, it's a uh, Prairie City Road on one side, and I I forget what the other boundary is on the other. Yeah, side. basically the other outer boundary. But yeah, no, you've got yeah. it pretty well pinned. Okay. Um, so there's some talk. I, I, my understanding is so that passed with like 70 percent uh, of the vote or something like that uh, back then. And um, it was kind of this, um, you know, hey, Folsom wants to make sure that we are in control of what's happening on that side, that side. So, uh, you know, we have control of what happens in Folsom for the future of Folsom. Um, there's new talk that I have heard about like further expanding that, further expanding our reach. Um, true? Is that something that you support? What are your thoughts on that? Well, okay. So to the best of my knowledge, nothing okay. like that has really approached the current city council. So I can't say that that's absolutely going to happen. Right. What people have to understand is growth is always determined by so many different factors, one of which sometimes is um, land availability and availability of whether or not we have another city looking at trying to make us in surplus and um, therefore hurting our ability to serve our own uh, citizens. <clears throat> so the, if there is something that's going to happen, yes, it would be south of, of White Rock if it's going to be there. Um, Truthfully, there's a lot of land owned by a lot of very wealthy people, and they have not let anybody really know what their intentions are yet. There is discussion, I'm sure of it, but where that goes, I don't know yet. You know, it's if it's anything, it's in the early stage. Okay. Is that something you think is a, a good idea, or do you? Well, have... again, it's 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 a question of well, let me ask you to let me pose the question this way: If you live south of fifty and you are content with everything there and White Rock works really well for you, what happens if you could cross White Rock and then now you've got maybe more access to um, commercial services, for example, than you already do. You don't have to go across East, you know, up East Bidwell and into the older part of Folsom, but north of 50, would that be a benefit to you? If you were in El Dorado Hills and you could go down White Rock, which is the, the corridor there, which is a, you know, a corridor, it's not, lit, it's not a lot of traffic lights there, would you be willing to do that? So it becomes sometimes people look at convenience for themselves, um, and that is a measure of why maybe you go down someplace. Uh, somebody who owns a bunch of land might say, hey, I can build, uh, I'm just going to throw this out. I can, I can build a university south of 50 or you know, south of, of White Rock. What if I did that? What would happen? Um, I don't know, but what would happen if they did? I mean, let's look at it that way. It could be tons of new jobs. Excuse me. I didn't realize this was on. Tons of new jobs. It could be, you know, um, a huge boost to our, our tax base. So, I mean, there's there's so many different ver variables. I, I don't know. It would be hard to not consider something, but it might not be practical either. And that's that's that would be the job of the council. Okay, I appreciate that. So you're you're seeing it from both sides. Or, yeah, I, I that's I, I try to do that way, John. And sometimes <laughs> it gets a little exciting. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, and of course, I mean, we're human, so we're going to be passionate about something. Hopefully we land on one side or the other, you know, we're, we're right. standing for things um, at, at some point. Um, uh, talk to me about, you mentioned something about uh, tax revenue. Talk to me about a sales tax, because I know that that's something that uh, raising the sales tax in Folsom has been something that has come up. Right. Uh, so... Let me see if I can do this answer with an illustration. You own a business, right? I do. And, and you know, if I said to you, hey, I, I need you to increase the cost of the tax in your business, some of your people, some of the people that come to your store are gonna grumble, okay? Because um, you have to raise your, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna take more money from them for taxes. But let's back up the other way and say, um, if you decided to sell your, your coffee for something less, you know, would you do that? you know, um, would that make sense to you? And that's the other side of the coin. So when you look at, look at trying to increase taxes, 
and, and the reason behind it, retail sales are flat, which is, you know, I'm picking on your store and I'm sorry, but retail sales are considered flat. Well, there's a reason they're considered flat. Everybody has this little thing called a QR code or a website. And if you walk into, into a store, the Palladio, that's a retail outlet and say, hey, oh, by the way, you don't have my size. And the, the person there says, well, yeah, you're right, I don't. But we have it on the website, probably. Check it out. So when you say sales are flattened because retail sales are down, that's part of the reason why. The retailers themselves aren't flush with the inventory they once were. In, in your case, in your store, you manage your inventory to meet your client expectations. You're not going to be real happy and neither are your clients if you miss that guess and you don't have enough of, let's say, coffee cakes or whatever. Um, they're not going to be happy with you. So they're going to remember, hey, you didn't have so and such and this and that when I went in. And, you know, uh, and actually, truthfully, there is a competitor in town who, you know, I, I get a little little question in my head when I go, how come you don't have what you claim to be, you know, plenty of? You know, or, and so it's like, why am I patronizing you? Uh, I can't. I, and I did order it on the Internet to pick it up at the store. And it went the other way. Didn't work. So retail sales are an interesting animal. So the flip side of all of that is, you know, there is some new construction south of 50 that is going to bring some commercial stuff. There's new, some new commercial things going on here in town that recently were approved. Retailers look at cities like ours and they measure the town by a, a series of, of metrics. The first metric is going to be how many people live here. When we get to 100,000, they're going to be really excited. They really do. They get really excited, 100,000. Then all your major retailers, literally all over the world, will not suddenly notice this little place called Folsom. Now, the smarter ones have already kind of looked at us a little bit, and they have a slightly less metric. And so you can pick up the Nordstrom Rack, for example, in, in Palladio. So um, you can look at Kohl's, but Kohl's and Walmart have a whole different matrix on how they look at things. And the retailers I'm talking about are the kinds of retailers that you'd see in the Roseville Galleria, the H&Ms, you know, the Williams Sonomas, you know, the uh, Tommy Bahama, Tiffany's, those kinds of retailers only go into shopping centers areas where there's 100,000 or more people and, this, and, the, and they're called MSAs and they surround the area and they look at that and they draw a circle. You could do that with a compass, maybe three, four miles out and all of a sudden, hey, we've got, you know, 250, 300,000 bodies that could come to our little store. Well, now they get excited and they come. Retail sales have changed. So Folsom is probably in a unique position to actually grow retail sales without doing the tax. Now, a lot of people want to do the tax because they want to put in the general fund and they want the general fund to do other things with it, which has merit. And I, I understand that concept. Flip side to that is, let's say we want to build a project of some kind and we need matching grants from the state or the federal government because that's how things are done in major big dollars. And you look at that and you say to yourself, well, I have enough money now that I can match the grant at the city of Folsom. Now I can do that project where another city is trying to do the same thing. We got more money than they do now so we can get, we can get that done. So that's the other benefit of doing the tax. It isn't just because retail sales are, are lagging, if you will. So there's two sides to that argument. And, and, and in today's environment, I would submit, if I was to have that tax on the, on the uh, ballot right now, it would be soundly defeated. I don't think any of us would accept a, a new tax. I, I would be surprised, let's put it that way, if we did. But that doesn't mean that next year or two years down or three years down that we would not. Right. It's, it's a cycle. And it, My and answer. It's been question. defeated before. Yes. Yeah. It's been defeated before. Um, but we all change, as you've noted earlier. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like, so to summarize, uh, you're more in favor, it sounds like, of attracting bigger retailers to the area to increase uh, revenue and, and taxes. Uh, you're more in favor of that than raising the sales tax. Yeah, because if, I, if, I, if I'm successful at that, I create more jobs. I create more opportunity for people to live here. You know, I create a bigger base, not just a slim sliver of a base. Okay. Okay. So um, thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. What, are the, what are the things that you're passionate about uh, for your district? Like what are the, the, the main concerns for your district? Well, it's really interesting. So uh, as I explained, it's pretty good size. So I'm talking to a few of my neighbors. There's a, the biggest issue we all face is Empire Ranch Road. 
which recently was signalized. Um, it's a great drag strip for people. Um, so uh, sometimes people go out there and move their cars down the road at speeds they should not be. Uh, Golf Links also has a similar issue as I've discovered. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, it's, it's, uh, that is the number one concern in the area. The other side of the coin, traffic wise, is the connector that's gonna eventually, Caltrans is gonna build uh, across the freeway, connecting uh, the plan area, which is south of 50, mm -hmm. and Empire Ranch Road. And that connector opens up to a whole new series of potential traffic headaches for uh, Folsom PD and, and the rest of us that live here. Um, so uh, traffic mitigation and concern is a big deal here. Iron Point is the other flash area, um, as you probably well know. And so it, it's it, the number one concern of this side of the coin, if you will, is traffic. And even though we do have some fairly you know, well mapped out roads and things like that, we have to think about how we're going to move the traffic along without creating a gridlock. And I, when I say gridlock, I don't want a gridlock of signals because that just makes people really frustrated and takes your quality of life a little bit away. So there's, there's some balance there and that would be you know, looking at probably FPD and suggesting, hey guys, uh, we have a traffic issue, which they know and they're short people anyway. So they would probably say, well, you know, if we had the bodies, we could put a couple, three more motors on that area. And, you know, when a motorcycle cop's sitting with a radar gun sh shooting at you, yeah, slow down <laughs> by nature, right? Sure. <laughs> so, you know, we can do more of that, uh, I think, as opposed to trying to signalize everything to death. Okay. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about our police department a little bit since you uh, kind of went there for a second. Um, yeah, we... Uh, we have fewer officers now uh, than we have uh, had in the past. Uh, right. We, uh, what do you think? Uh, are, are you saying you're in favor of hiring more? And if so, how do we do that? Why have well, that? how we do that? And, and yes, so I'm part, part of my platform, and I didn't say that at the front end because I knew we'd probably get into this conversation, is, you know, I believe that our public safety is not as well funded as it ought to be. And so therefore, uh, it's, it's a concern of mine, part of the reason I'm even running. So I'll give you a statistic that came right out of the uh, annual report from the Folsom PD in 2021. Not, not a lot of people read this, which I can understand. I'm taking um, notes. I'm sorry? I'm taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to cut to the total number. Then if you want me to break it down, I can do that. So total property crime loss in 2021 was $3 $219,266 in 2021. Okay. Now, in case anybody doesn't think that's a lot of money, I do. I think that's significant. Um, what it breaks down to, if you want to I know, think anything is a lot of money these yeah. days. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, it was interesting, and I did statistics. So I actually asked FPD to show me how we compared to prior years. We're actually, we have fewer officers on the road in all categories. We are actually in 22, if I extrapolate out, we're going to surpass this number easily. And we're actually going, going back in time. We're going to pass all of the crime statistics from 2018 up. In other words, we're, we're, there's more, more, more of us and there's fewer police. When there's more of something, there's always going to be a problem. Um, the other thing I didn't like that most of us didn't know, again, from the same report from last year, there's a thing called ORC, and briefly what it means is these gangs of criminals robbing a store, coming in, you know, like 20 of them and breaking into a store and stealing everything inside and they're running out again. Um, in effect, that's retail burglary on a grand scale. So it's called ORC. So I'm gonna read what the police report actually says. This ORC trend is spread across California with groups traveling up and down the state, committing these grab and run thefts. The city of Folsom experienced over 100 of these thefts at our shopping centers and department stores in 21. That to me is somewhat disconcerting because we talked about retailers. Well, the retailers aren't gonna to wanna to come or they're gonna carry less inventory or people are unwilling to shop in the stores because they're concerned about something like this going on. So, you know, do we have enough cops? No, we do not. 
Do we need more police on the street? Yes, we do. But we also need middle management at, at both fire and police. We need to staff up uh, back to where we were. There was a covenant between the city and the unions at the time of the Great Recession that basically assured FPD and, and the fire department and others that the, the city would bring back as many people to staffing levels as they could as rapidly as they can. That commitment has not been honored. So right now we're more than 13, 13 police officers down from, 18, from 2018. Mm -hmm. I'm not even gonna go, number of firefighters is very similar. They're, they need more middle management help or management help uh, because there's tremendous amount of overtime you know, because of, of the shortages on both sides of, of these guys. Uh, so the solution, which you asked me, is to look at the budget, visit the reserves, which right now are by uh, omission, by admission, excuse me, from the city manager's office are 23.8%. The city minimum is 15. 15% of assessed value. Our assessed value is consi considerably higher today than it was in 2008. So we have a ton more money um, and it's going up. So do we really need 23.8% reserve when, you know, when we had the worst case in our, in our city history, we had about 17 million sitting in the bank and that was drawn down to four. So the answer is probably not. So it's one of those priorities where it takes the whole council to come together and decide that maybe we need to consider changing the budget and putting more emphasis into public safety. And that's, that's a consensus argument. I mean, in other words, I can't write up there and say, we're gonna do it. You know, I need help from, the, if I get elected, the, my other colleagues. Okay. I, I'm sure the, um, the surplus, um, I'm sure an argument on the other side is uh, an impending recession. Yes? Mm -hmm. An imminent recession, I should say. Is that what you think? Is that what you think? Is, is that, I'm not saying that's what I think. You don't get- Oh, no, I'm asking you. <laughs> you're, you're a business owner. Do you think there's an impending recession coming? I think that there's a lot of talk about an upcoming recession, and I think that um, I think that that the media likes to stir a lot of fear with those things. Uh, um, but so I don't know what I think. Okay, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a rhetorical question. A bit, yeah, yeah. And, and so, I would imagine if you have a if a city has a surplus, that's what they're looking forward to. Right. One of the things is. What happens if the if the bottom drops out? Right. So at 23.8%, it's greater than the minimum surplus that the council established by a council order several years back, which was 15%. So obviously we have more than what we need. So that's where that's that's a, why I said what I did. Secondarily, yeah. I'm in the financial services industry. And yeah. so I don't see the kind of recession that some of the uh, other people think they see coming, you know, what, what I see is more of an issue with inflation and because you, you're a business owner, so you know what that means. Um, oh. So <clears throat> inflation is our biggest problem. Sure. Um, you know, if there's a, going to be a recession, recessions happen in the United States about every 20 years anyway, by our own history. Sometimes they're more severe than others, but there's not the same underpinnings to any kind of financial upheaval that we had back in 08 anyway. So if there's anything gonna happen, it'd be what I would call you know, very soft landing. Let's just say a correction. Um, but again, I'll flip it the other way. Assessed value in Folsom is significantly higher in 22 than it was in 21. Case in point was the Sacramento Bee carried an article now about two weeks ago that shows a number of real estate sales that closed there were over eight in the million dollar range. So at 1.19% of assessed value, which is the normal, which counts all your bonds and your 1% tax, <clears throat> you can figure out these guys who bought those houses for over a million dollars each, that's a $23,000 annual tax bill. You know, we get a pretty good slice of that. So, and there's eight of those in one week. So our assessed value continues to go up. So at the end of the day, um, that means our reserves go up. So that means we still have extra money. That's not going to go sideways. The only way, the only time you're going to see assessed value go down 
is if someone like you or I who own a home, for example, would say, hey, county assessor, uh, we lost 400,000 of our value. You need to reassess my property. That can, you can actually do that. A lot of people did in 08. And now guess what? That's been reassessed again. It's back up. Yeah. You know, what, what, they, what they take from you, they, they give back, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I appreciate that, that clarification. So what you're saying is, um, if I'm understanding, uh, yes, uh, is surplus is uh, more than is agreed upon, is needed to handle something like a recession, if in fact something like that does happen. And so since there's an overage, we should consider spending some of that money on things like law enforcement. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That, that's helpful. That's, that's good for me to know. Like I said, I'm just a little guy. I don't know much, you know. Remember, I still need all the help from my colleagues in order to do anything. <laughs> yeah, are you, a, to team, do it. Are you a team player? Pardon? Are you a team player? Yes, very much so. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, do, you, do you envision a, a council for this next season uh, that that gets along, that works together to make things happen? The answer to your question depends on who's on the council. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. what the selection is going to decide, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I don't know that answer. You know, I do know that um, there's two members who are going to stay that are, if you will, static. And so um, I would do everything in my power to reach out and work with them. And then the, if, the, there's, if there's new people on the council, then I would do the same thing with them. We'd all do, we, I think the councils in the past historically have tried to work together um sometimes with great success sometimes with less success mm -hmm. okay good thank you um all right let's talk about let's talk about things like retail expansion in other parts of the city uh, specifically uh i've heard talk of uh, the river district uh, uh in recent days again it kind of every yeah. once in a while it kind of rises to the surface and it's a big deal uh, expand, preserve, expand, preserve. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, on the River District, uh, and what's your your vision? Uh, so you're talking about moving the corporate the corporation yards, really, what you're referring to, right? I mean, yeah, I think that's that a, expand, that's, preserve. Yeah, that, that's a big part of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. the corporation yard, you know, should it be protected? Uh, right. You know, parks, uh, spots for families, or uh, you know, there's talk of things like. Uh, and, and on the bluffs too, you know, amphitheaters, right. concert venues, retail outlets, more restaurants, et cetera. Right. Yeah, there's a plethora of ideas. There's no question about it. Yeah. So the linchpin to all of this is you got to move the corporation yard south of 51st. There's space allocated for that. So that whole transition has to happen first. Mm -hmm. um, so until that does, we're all we're gonna be talking for a while. And then of course the environmental issues, if any, would have to be addressed and how whatever consequence to that would be as far as cleanup, if any, it's going to slow us down some more. And finally, where, where does the, the city want to be with that? that? That would be something that the voters really should decide or at least have a significant input on. Um, okay. You got to remember that you're not going to build if the, if the people who own the retail stores and stuff like that don't see a need to be here. They're not going to want to come. On the other side, um, if you really want more open space and, and things of that nature, then you have to make sure that you have the ability to protect it, keep it clean and keep it safe so people will use it. It's really sad when you build a park or something like that and nobody goes because there's an element in the park but you just don't particularly appreciate so nobody goes. Now you got this beautiful park that you can't use. So there's, there's a plethora of, of conflicting ideas on that to be honest with you. So I think the voters should have significant input and I would actually require the voters to do that. I mean, my personal opinion, it's, it's tough. It's a hard word, requires a hard word, but I want to know. I want to know from, from the people that live there, from the people surround the entire area, what they really think, you know? And, and, and fortunately, it's only a percentage that respond, um, sure. but I'd want to know, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that would be part of my job as a city council member, if okay. elected. Good. There's so many things I want to ask you, but we're, 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 we're gonna, <laughs> yeah, the more I talk, the more you want to know, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's good. 
That's, yeah. That's, that's how it should be, right? This is, yes. a, this is a conversation. So that's good. It unearths, uh, conversation unearths things to, to talk about and surfaces the need to know about things. So I, I appreciate that. Um, in your opinion, um, if you were to give the city a grade on, on, on just how we are doing, um, what grade would you give it? And uh, where do you think we need the most improvement? And maybe you've answered this, but maybe I'm, I'm trying to get. Okay, so are you talking about a grade as overall place to live? Uh, overall place to work, combination of both, uh, planning growth forward. I assume you want all those elements. I, in all, all of those. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, and it's all, it's all, you know, subjective. I, I right. get that there's, there's so many different uh, categories in there. Sure. Yeah. Are we forward thinking? Are we thinking through the right things? Do we troubleshoot well? Right. Um, um, I, yeah. Okay. So, we have historically been one of the more popular places to live by name by outside sources, you know, in the, in the state of California and across the nation, we've been in the top five multiple times. So Folsom historically has always been forward thinking and planning well. I mean, I originally came from the San Diego area and Orange County and LA, I guess that's where I grew up in this LA area. So the planning here in the past has been very intelligent. You know, um, it's not been haphazard. Oh, hey, we got somebody who wants to come in. We're going to build them a whatever and, and you know, the, 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 screw everything up in the process. So forward going is the same kind of plan. I've sent out the planning commission. So um, we get to look at stuff <clears throat> that's coming up, you know, coming down the pike and say, okay, is this intelligent plan? Does this fit where we want to go? Not does it just fit the general plan, but does it fit the concept of Folsom? So, for example, everything that's getting built right now, south of 50, we're continuing the trail system. It's absolutely a requirement. There is no exception to that. So we're going to have even more trails than we have now. Now, we got to wait for the trees to grow up a little bit, you know, to make it even more fun, you know, when we have the big trees here. But at the end of the day, the grade level, because we are forward thinking and we have continued to be such for the most part, um, I would put us at a strong uh, you know, A. But is there room for improvement? Always, 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 you know, but that's where I would put us. So Folsom, distinctive by nature. Come on, trees. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, they got to grow over there. Yeah, yeah okay. well, it's going to take a while for South of 50s trees to grow. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But the trails will be there. So people can still enjoy the trails. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, that in that part of their quality of life, you know, how many people use the trails, you know, north of 50 now and, and go through all our, I mean, I've got a trail behind my home now that wasn't there two years ago. Um, it granted it's EDH, um, that's their side of the hill, but there's still a trail and I can access it, you know, and so can every other resident of Folsom on this side. So it's a quality, we don't have, you didn't have that kind of trail thinking, if you will, in San Diego, for example, that just isn't, or Orange County, or almost all of LA. It's been good talking to you, Bill. Um, yeah, we should uh, get together and talk again some some other time. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, uh, we're going to wrap this up with something fun I'm doing with with <laughs> all of the potential uh, with all of the candidates here. Uh, okay. It's called Politicians Answer Medical Questions. So here's your medical question for the <laughs> government. This okay. is my third cup of coffee. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it depends on your bladder, right? Mm -hmm. It's old. <laughs> okay. So I drink five or six cups of coffee a day. So I, I think it, I, don't, I don't see it as a, as a deficit at all. All I right. Do. Good answer. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bill Miklos, thank you very much. We appreciate it. My pleasure. You. Thank you very much, John. Peace. You have a good day. You too. Take care.